What's up, Empowered Christians? This is Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries, back with you again to continue our Bible study series. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to go back and watch uh, chapter 1, subsection G, and the video right after that, subsection H. They're both about free will and about the knowledge of good and evil, and they will lead right into this section, which is, what do you really want? What do you want? Now, a lot of times we think we know what we want, but the, the truth of the matter is, the answer to this question really matters. So that's what we're going to dive in today. When determining what destination you end up in, what matters is what you want. Because depending on what you want changes which, dir which direction you're going to go in and which destination you will end up in. Will you end up in eternity with God or will you end up in eternity uh, separated from God? And the, the question to ask yourself is, what do I really want? Let's dive in. So let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. One, if God desires us to be righteous and godly, why did he create a reality where sin was even possible? Why is it even possible to sin? Why did he even give us this ability to sin if he wants us to be righteous and godly? He's omnipotent. He could make us incapable of sin right? In the new life to come, we don't have sin. So we know that he can make us that way. Why did he make us so that we could sin? And here's, here's a question. Um, and this, if you've never studied the difference between Calvinism, Arminianism, Provisionism, these, we'll, we'll get into these topics later on um, in deeper uh, detail in, in chapter two. But the question is, if does God give us the ability to make choices freely with our own free will and at the same time allow us to be so dead in our sins that we won't repent and can't repent or believe in Jesus unless he first regenerates us like the Calvinists claim? Does God make us so dead that we're incapable of doing anything good unless he first changes us. And if he does so, then ultimately would it not make him responsible for all of the sin and the suffering as a result of sin? Okay, so I think the answer to that second question is no. <laughs> no, I believe he gives us the ability to recognize our sinfulness. And we have the ability to repent. Repentance is not a work. Um, and neither is believing in Jesus a work. It's We're not saving ourselves. We're choosing to recognize our own need for a Savior. It's not the same thing. So if God wants us to be righteous and godly, why does he allow us to have the opportunity to sin? Why does he give us the ability to sin? Why, do, why, why is this something we can even do? And we looked at in the last section, the reason is because he gives us the opportunity to experience good and evil so that we could choose that which is good. We learn, well, let, me, let me get my copy of the book here, and I have it in um, recorded on page 39 in this section where Paul is, he's describing, in, in Romans chapter 1, talks about um, our fallen state and how we've really uh, become depraved and fallen into sin, and it has corrupted and polluted um, the way that people think and the way that people believe and the way that people act and behave. And so he leads all of that into chapter 2, where we pick up in verse 4 where Paul says, Do you not, or do you disregard the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you to repentance? 
So God is patiently waiting for us to recognize our own sinfulness in order to lead us to repentance so that we can recognize our own wickedness and see it for what it is. And he is enduring this with patience. In verse 5, But because of your hard and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each one according to his deeds. Right? So God is holding us accountable to what we do. We are responsible for our own deeds. And though he is patiently waiting for us, which unfortunately, it, it, you know, it's a good and a bad thing. In, in a good sense, we're getting plenty of time to choose to repent. Right? He, we're not thrown in hell eternally the first time we sin. We're given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to realize how wicked we are. We, we get the consequences of our own sins and we, we look into the world and we see the brokenness of it because of the cumulative total of everyone's sins. And we say, this is all broken. Why is it broken? Why is it bad? And it all points back to, it points back to sin. It's bad and broken and there's suffering and there's death because of sin. And God is all these things are they're getting stored up against us and one day God is going to take out his full wrath out on all of those sins and we either put our trust in Jesus and let him pay the penalty of those sins on our behalf or we rise on judgment day and we pay the penalty of our own sins on our own behalf okay continuing in verse 7 to those who by perseverance in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow wickedness, there will be wrath and anger. So when we, in our free will and in our perseverance, want and seek and desire and strive after and persevere in doing good, we demonstrate that what we want ultimately, the map we have in our hands that we're following, the destination that we want to arrive at is glory, honor, and immortality because you can't get that through any of the other false religions and systems you need Jesus because as soon as you realize you can't be good enough on your own you need Jesus so if what you want is good and glorious and honorable and immortality you need the author of the source of life you need to be in alignment and in harmony with and in right relationship with the author of life, the creator of the universe, and you need to be in his will and an object that produces him glory. And if you are, then he will give you eternal life and you'll have eternal life with him. And if you don't want that, if you are self-seeking, if you want what you want and you don't care what God wants, if you reject the truth and you don't care if you're following a lie because sometimes the lies taste sweeter than the truth. And if you follow wickedness and what God calls wickedness, not what you call wickedness, that's self-seeking. What God calls wickedness, there will be wrath and anger. And so the question we have to ask ourselves. Uh, what do you, what do I, what do we really want? What do we really want? Are we just serving our own sinful flesh? Are we self-seeking? 
Are we just indulging the, the, the desires of the world, right? Do you want fame and respect and people to love you and people to, um, do you want to be wealthy? You know, do, uh, 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 are you driven by the things of this world, regardless of whether or not they're part of God's will? Do they lead to glory? Do they lead to honor in God's eyes? Do they lead to immortality? And really, we can all, and I use one analogy, one last thing I want to leave you with today. Um, our actions reflect what we actually value more than our thoughts or words do. Let me say that again. Our actions reflect what we actually value much more than our thoughts or words do. Right? We, if we all say, you know, I want to be in great physical shape. And if all I had to do is, you know, do you want to be in great physical shape? Just check this box. And if you do, then, it w then you'll get it automatically. We would all do it. It'd be easy. But do you want to be in such great physical shape that you're willing to have uh, the diet plan and the nutrition plan to make it happen? Are you willing to exercise to make it happen? Are you willing to have a disciplined lifestyle to make it happen? Are you willing to reject some of the things that might um, be, you know, uh, enticing in the moment you know if, if you want to look great do you want to look great more than you want the big piece of cheesecake right so it's your actions reflect what you really want more than than what you what your thoughts or words do we can all say I want this thing you know if I say I want a good marriage but am I neglecting my spouse but then then our actions reflect what we really want do we say we love God but we don't spend time with God. We don't actually invest ourselves into that relationship. Do we say we want the world to be a better place and yet all of our time is spent on our own activities and we're not even trying to advance the kingdom. We're not trying to bring the gospel to people. Do we say we want more people to know Jesus and yet we don't do anything about it, right? Our actions reflect what we really want. So we need to challenge ourselves and say, what do I really want? And if what I'm doing with my life and if with my time and my talent and my treasure and my uh, resources and everything else that I have available to me that God has put me, um, res you know, put me responsible for and, and said, I want you to steward all of the stuff that you have been given for my glory. What are, how are we stewarding it? What are we doing with it? And that's what we have to ask ourselves. What do you really want? What do you really want? And whatever you do will reflect what you really want. Now, this isn't to say that sometimes we have challenges and what we want in our heart, we don't we've got to cultivate it and, and learn to make a discipline out of it in our lives. We're all on different stages of life and, and you know, we're all growing at different paces. But if, if you've been saying it for months or years or decades, then you don't really want it as bad as you think or claim to. You're, you need to live it out. And what you do will be the fruit that shows the condition of your heart. What you do in reality will be fruit that demonstrates what is actually going on in the inside. And God looks at both the outward fruit as well as the inward thoughts and intentions of the heart. But our fruit can be an indicator to tell us what's going on inside of our heart. So examine your fruit. And later on, we have uh, uh, chapter five is all about fruitfulness. So we're gonna we're gonna go deep in that. But for right now, just look at your life and see: is what I'm chasing after? Is what my energy and time is focused on? Is it after glory, honor, and immortality? And if it isn't, I need to make sh I need to get right. And if it is, then continue to invest in those things, and it will keep you on the straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. 
All right, I'm Pastor Brian with Empower Christian Ministries. If you haven't already, uh, click like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you don't miss the next video. And until next week, have an empowered week. God bless.